In this video, we're going to be looking at how to use something called projects, which is a feature that's implemented in our studio. Um, projects are a really useful way of managing your work and they allow you to um, organize your work in a much better way than you might normally do it. And they allow easy sharing and collaboration. So let's start off by just looking at what you might normally do when you're um, analyzing some data in R. Uh, so here I'm analyzing some data on the number of UFO reports per year since, um, since, since records began. And what I've got is I've got, a, I've got a directory here, I've got a folder, and I've got a script in that folder, I've got some data, and I've got um, a plot of those data which I've produced. Um, and if I want to do anything with this, I'm going to navigate my way into this folder, which is in my documents folder, and I might double click on the, um, on the R script to open the R script. And we can then run this R script and it will, it will reproduce our graph for us. Um, and we could edit it to do, to do other things as well. One thing you can notice is that the script starts off with an instruction to set the working directory to the, um, to the folder that we've got our analysis stored in. Um, and if you're going to be analyzing lots of different sets of data and you've got them all in different directories, then you're going to be doing an awful lot of this setting working directories and then, um, and then analyzing your data on that basis. Um, if you're sharing an analysis, of course, that's no good for the people you're sharing the analysis with because unless they've also got a folder called UFO analysis that happens to be in their documents folder um, and not somewhere else, they're going to have to use a different working directory. So just to start off with, they're going to have to go into your script and they're going to have to edit the set working directory call um, in order to be able to use it. So that's a bit of a pain. So we'd rather not be doing that. Um, what we can do instead of just dumping everything in a folder like this and then bothering with annoying stuff like setting working directories is we can set the whole thing up as an R project. So if we want to start an R project, we can navigate to the file menu and click on new project. We're just going to ignore that. We don't want to save the workspace image. And when you click on new project, it gives you a bunch of different options. We're not going to talk about version control today, but this is what you would do if you were using GitHub for version control. And um, we've got two other options. We can start a new project in a brand new working directory, or we can associate a project with an existing working directory. This is pretty self-explanatory. Um, in this case, we're going to associate the existing directory that we already have with our data and our script in as a new R project. So we're going to click on that, and we can browse our way to our folder, which is already there. And then we can just click on Create Project. And when we do that, we now have um, a new R project. Um, and you can see a couple of things have happened. Um, so the files window, or the files tab in this particular pane, now shows us the contents of our directory. And you'll notice that we've got a new, a new file in there, ufoanalysis.rproj. Um, the rproj file is a file that RStudio uses to store information about the project. And now that we've done this, it essentially sets the working directory to be the project directory every time you open the project. So if you share a project with your colleagues to collaborate, they don't need to go in and edit the set working directory instruction because they just need to open the project and that will essentially automatically be done. So we've got our project open. The files have appeared automatically in the files window. If we want to open our script window, we've got that and we can now get rid of that set working directory instruction and our script will run just as well as it did before. So let's just run our script. And we've got a plot showing the number of UFO reports by month since the year 1900. Um, going back to our files, you can also see the data files there. If you click on that, you can, you've got the option to import it if you want to. Obviously, normally we just do it using a read CSV function call here but you might want to do it this way. You can also view the file and 
that brings it up in a separate tab in the source window here. And it's a CSV file, so you can see the commas separating the values. You can actually edit your data to a certain extent in this, in this window. It's not really ideal for it. It's not particularly designed for that. But if you wanted to, for example, remove all the data points from before the year 1900, um, so we've got some reports here of UFOs from 1615, apparently, you could do that. So we could just highlight these up to the first value after the year 1900, and we can delete those. And you could then save this as a new file in your R project, so we could call that UFA data 2, and that would then be available. And you can see it's now appeared in our files window here. So if you're using an R project like this, um, you've got the benefit that you open it and everything's there. Um, if you change the arrangement of the panes in our studio, let's say you want to make the plots nice and big and you want to see them like that, then if you quit our studio and reopen it, it will remember the arrangement of the panes that you had, which is a fairly small detail, but it's quite a cool thing to do. So we're just going to do that. So we're going to quit our studio. Yes, we'll save our selected documents. We've quit it and now we can reopen it by double clicking on the proj file. And you can see that it's remembered the layout of panes that we had before. So that's quite handy. We've got various options for opening projects. So if we go to file, then we've got a recent projects list here. So we can open recent projects. If you click on open project in new session, then you can have one project open in an RStudio window like this. And then you can open another project in a separate instance of our studio, which can be another really good way of organizing your workflow and keeping your projects separate from each other. A final thing to point out with using our studio projects is that you can search within a project. So our studio will index all of the files in your project and you can actually do a search within a project. Um, this isn't something we particularly need to do for a small project like the one we're looking at here. But if you've got lots and lots of files in your project, that can get very, very handy indeed. You can search for a file name if you use this, this search window up here. So if you want to know which files, for example, have the word analysis in the title, it will give you that one option and you can click on that and it'll open it for you. Um, it will also index all the functions that you specify or the functions that you define uh, in, in your work, and you'll be able to search for those. So let's say we set up a function here. Um, maybe we're going to call it big month, and it's a function which we could run on count, which would just tell us um, which months had more than 600 UFO sightings. So a very simple function. Um, so we've set up a function called big month, and we're going to save this script as a new script. So we're going to call it UFO analysis two and we save that. And then sometime later we come back and we know there's this function called big month, but we can't remember where it is. Um, we can just search for it in this window here and you see it brings up the, uh, brings up the option to see that and you can just click on that and it opens the, uh, opens the script window at that particular function. If you want to do Let's get rid of these. If you want to do a more general search, I don't want to save those. And in fact, we're going to delete that file so that we don't get confused. Yes, we're going to delete that. There it goes. Um, if you want to do a more general search, then you can also use find in files. Um, you can also use the keyboard shortcut for that, which on a Mac is shift control F. So find in files. Let's say you know that one of your data files has data for the year 1561. Um, we've got two data files. One of them's got data for the year 1561. One hasn't, we don't know which one it is. We can just put 1561 in there and we can tell it, well, we just use the default options and tell it to find it. And it actually finds it for us. It's telling us the line number and it's telling us the file it's in. If we double click on that, it will actually bring it up in a viewer window here, we can see that data point there. So using our projects also gives us a lot of functionality in terms of being able to search within our work and find things that we've done or find data that we know are there somewhere, but we're not quite sure where they are. That's enough for this video. 
In the next video, we'll look at code editing in our studio and some of the tips and tricks for making your code editing and code writing a great deal easier.